Lhotse Lhotse are stock comedic routines that are traditionally associated with Commedia dell'arte. Performers, especially those playing the masked Arlecchino, had many of these bits in their repertoire, and would use improvisatory skills to weave theme into the plot of dozens of different Commedia scenarios. These largely physical sequences could be improvised or pre-planned within the performance and were often used to enliven the audience when a scene was dragging, to cover a drop line or cue, or to delight an expectant audience with the troupe's specialized at Lhotse. Lhotse could be completed by a single player a few individuals or the entire troupe. While its placement in the plot was usually fixed during rehearsals, it was acceptable for an actor to unexpectedly utter a predetermined line of dialogue that instructed fellow performers to enact Lhotse at any time during the performance. Sometimes Lhotse could take place in dances or songs accompanied by onstage stringed musical instruments. Evidence of Lhotse's conventionalization within the Italian Commedia dell'arte includes visual iconography, paintings, fragmented writings, and personal manuscripts from prominent 16th and 17th century dramatists and actors. One of the earliest accounts can be found in the work of Flaminio Scala, who listed 30 instances of Lhotse, though the word Lhotse was not yet used. Nearly a century later, Andrea Petrucci described Lhotse as a fixture of Commedia in the art of the rehearsal performance and improvisation. In Selva over Sabaldo di Concetti comic raccolti dal P.D. Placidio, Adriani di Luca provides a list of Lhotse from a manuscript that is one of the few extant and intact accounts of Lhotse from 17th and 18th century Italy. The manuscript is currently held at the library in Perugia most recently. Mel Gordon compiled a comprehensive collection of Lhotse performed by Commedia troops between 1550 and 1750, and organized the descriptions into 12 categories that include acrobatic and mimic as well as violence-slash-sadistic behavior Lhotse. In addition, visual iconography from the 17th and 18th century depicts elements of Lhotse that often portray what would have been considered vulgar physical acts. Though few of the written accounts describe such content, it has been proposed that the marked lack documentation may be, in part, an attempt to evade rising censorship by authorities, especially in the case of Parisian Commedia Italienne under the rule of Louis XIV, who threatened troops with the revocation of royal subsidies should their material be deemed subversive. In some cases, his censorship resulted in a troop's expulsion from the country. Others theorize that Lhotse often went undocumented so that it could not be imitated by competing troops, as routines could not be patented. Also, it has been suggested that because the oral and physical nature of the training, as well as the inbred legacy of performers within the troupe, there was less of a need to have written explanations of Lhotse. While the direct influence of Italy's Commedia dell'arte on the England's Elizabethan and Jacobean theatre is subject to much debate, verbal and visual Lhotse were present in the plays of William Shakespeare. Shakespeare's work implies a familiarity with Italian literature and theatrical practices, though it is not certain that he ever experienced a Commedia performance firsthand. It is as likely that Richard Tarleton served as the inspiration for Shakespeare's plays, as well as the Lazzi of Italian Commedia. Verbal Lazzi was used in the form of puns, proverbs, and malapropisms, while instances of physical Lazzi were abundant, especially in the work of Shakespeare's clowns whose improvisations during performances often vex the playwright. More recent appropriations of Lhotse include the 1920s silent films of Charlie Chaplin, the silent-slash-sound films and stage productions of Laurel and Hardy, and Punch and Judy puppet shows. While many similarities exist, a few parallels can be drawn in the use of pratfalls, fright jumps, and physical settings to tenable the use of objects to perform the comedy. One popular comparison is Charlie Chaplin's Came to Arlecchino, or the Harlequin stick when used as a comedic debus. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.